Welcome back YouTube. What I thought I'd do is a couple of videos on a charger build that I started about a month back. Um, I started this and I realized that I lost the first video so now I'm re-recording that. It's also given me the opportunity to do a bit of an overview. So um, looking back on what I did, um, this at least gives you a bit more detail about what I was thinking. So about a month back I was trying to think how do I charge a power wall? How do I charge my 10 kilowatt power wall? Um, currently I've got 5 kilowatts, it's going to get to 10 etc. So how do we put that battery, uh, that power back into the batteries? Each, um, each night, let's, for example, we're going to use 10 kilowatts of our battery power. How do we put 10 kilowatts of, battery, uh, of power back into the power wall the next day so that we can reuse it the next night? Um, that creates a bit of a problem. Um, it means that we need to somehow create a power supply or a, a charger that is able to do so and a very powerful one um, to be able to produce enough current to be able to, to, um, to get to 10 kilowatts in a day. So I did some YouTubing. I found some, um, a couple of guys using two server power supplies um, connected up to their RC LiPo charger which is then used to charge their LiPo batteries. And you can get those expensive um, LiPo chargers but they require 24 volts on the input. 24 volts at high current that is. So what some guys are doing is that they're using two server power supplies. Now the good thing about server power supplies is that they use a, they um, have a large capacity of current on the 12 volt rail. On a normal computer power supply it's normally split between 12 volts and the 5 volt rail. However on a server power supply majority of the time it's um, on the 12 volt rail. So you get power supplies that are 12 volts at 100 amps or you get power supplies that are 12 volts at 50 amps and they range all the way up and down um, depending on the make and the model of the server. So what I ended up doing was finding a whole bunch of server power supplies and um, looking at what these guys were doing is that they were putting them in series. So they were getting to 24 volts to power their RC charger um, or their RC LiPo charger um, and I was thinking well if they're doing just putting two of them in series to get 24 volts what's stopping me from putting six of them in series? Now six of them in series will give me um, 83 volts. The cool thing about server power supplies is that you can normally adjust the 12 volt rail. You can normally adjust it up and down. So let's just say a normal uh, server power supply starts off at 12.7 volts. Well you can put a pot on that and increase that up to 13.8. 13.8 seems to be the over, uh, over voltage protection um, limit. So sometimes you got to draw that back a bit to 13.7. But either way, 13.8 times 6 gives us 83 volts. 83 volts is 4.1 volts per cell, and that means I can charge my um, power wall up um, during the day, and it means I can come up with a very powerful charger by utilizing six um, uh, server power supplies all in series. So that's where I, I got to, that's where I started, that's what made me start the build process and come up with a, a very large um, uh, power supply to be able to charge my power wall up. Now um, there's some advantages and disadvantages of doing so. One advantage is that they're quite, re uh, they're quite easy to get um, server power supplies just like computer power supplies and they, the advantages is that they're easy to work on and they're quite similar um, throughout the models. So what we need to do with the server power supply is that we um, need to uh, DC isolate the um, each of the DCs on each of the um, power supplies so that you can connect them in series. You can't just plug two power supplies in, in series together, they, it just won't work. Um, the, the DC negative is, or the DC ground is the same as the chassis ground on the super power supply. Um, it also creates another problem because you can't, once you do so, uh, once you isolate the DC, you can't then have the power supplies touch each other. So they need to be physically um, apart. So you need to kind of build some kind of enclosure to be able to store or to be able to put all these power supplies um, together so that they can work and, they don't, and so that they don't touch each other. Because if they touch each other, um, it'll go bang. So the idea is to get uh, a server power supply. It is to um, DC isolate it. It is to then connect it in series with another power supply and then get up to six. 
So the build and the next couple of videos will be just that. It'll be um, what the process is and what I did. If you want more in depth about it, you can just watch YouTube videos on connecting two server power supplies together. The only difference that I did is obviously connect six of them together to get to the, the voltage I need. Now the cool thing about, just very quickly, another cool thing about a server power supply is, uh, as I mentioned, you can adjust the voltage. Well, you can adjust that voltage down and you can adjust it up. Um, so what I've done is I've used a pot and I've adjusted it all to about 13.75, somewhere around there, sometimes 13.8. Um, but in more detail is in obviously these two videos. So that by, doing, by creating this kind of um, large um, power supply, it means that I can charge my power wall. The server power supplies um, are really high amperage. So the power supplies that I've got are around 47 amps at 12 volts. I've got a couple of them that are 55 amps at 12 volts, but majority of them are 55 amps. Oh, sorry, 47 amps. So obviously it's going to be the, the lowest common denominator in series. So what we're going to end up having is 83 volts at 47 amps. Um, because we've increased the voltage from 12.7 up to 13.8, um, that does mean that the current also um, has dropped down a little bit. So realistically, um, it's probably around 45 amps at 83 volts. So that's kind of what I ended up building um, in the next couple of videos. And um, one thing I must mention though, is that um, unless you know what you're doing, it's not really worth playing with this type of stuff. Um, obviously it's high voltage, um, it's 240 volts, and if you get it wrong, you could hurt yourself. So um, the main thing about this is be safe, and um, one thing after creating this power supply and isolating them from each other, um, once, they, once I do have six of them, um, is to not touch them. So once they are plugged into the AC, there's no touchy-touchy. So obviously you can play with the, um, the output, and you can play with the, the main AC switch but no touching the power supplies. Unlike a normal power supply where you can um, touch it, because it's been isolated from each other, you're not to touch them afterwards. So um, not unless you want to get some kind of a shock or the potential to get a shock. And it's normally the potential. So while it might not shock you, um, if something goes wrong inside because you've isolated it, there's every chance that you'll get the shock. So um, realistically, um, it's a bit risky doing this type of thing, um, isolating a, um, a power supply, but the advantage is there by putting them in series. Well, you can put them in parallel as well. Um, so if you want 12 volts at, a, at 200 amps, you can do so by putting two 100 watt power supplies in parallel. Um, however, what I need obviously is voltage, um, and 47 amps is, or well, 45 amps for example, um, is way more than I need to, um, to be able to charge my 5 kilowatts. Um, it's okay to be able to charge 10 kilowatts. So if I was putting 45 amps into 10 kilowatts of power, that'll be less than one amp per cell charging. However, if that was 47 amps, for example, plugged into five, uh, plugged to five kilowatts, um, that's going to be um, more than one point something amps per cell, which is um, a little bit risky to charge at um, that degree. So. The charger in this build is realistically for the 10 kilowatt hours, not for the 5 kilowatt hours. Um, what I had planned to do was build it for six, and then um, by putting six of them in series, but um, cutting a feed halfway so that after four power supplies, I could take a feed off that, which would be around 55 volts, and then um, using a, a DC to DC boost converter to then put that up to 83 volts so that I can charge 5 kilowatts at less current so that we're not pulling uh, 47 or 45 amps straight away when we plug it in. So the cool thing about um, using a server power supply is that they will put out a, a heck of a lot of current. Now the other thing to, to remember and why this kind of works is that a server power supply will give us constant current and it will give us constant voltage. We'll set it up so that we have say 83 uh, volts and it'll be 83 volts with a maximum draw of 47 amps. As the batteries or as 10 kilowatts charges up, uh, the batteries or the cells will draw less and less current as they um, reach their uh, full charge or their capacity mark, in which case the amperage draw at the start when they're flat um, will be high and as the packs charge up they the um, the amperage will, will slowly um, go down to the point that um, 
the charger will normally turn off. So a normal LiPo charger, for example, will be constant current, constant voltage until um, the current starts to taper off. And then when the, t when the current tapers off to, uh, it depends on how many cells you're charging, but if it's just one cell, let's just say it tapers off to 300 milliamps. When it hits 300 milliamps, the charger cuts off and it's classed as charged. So that's how a, lipo, a normal LiPo charger works. However, with a server power supply, um, well, uh, six server power supplies, it'll give out 83 volts and it'll give out 47 amps or 45 amps or somewhere around there. Um, however, the batteries will use um, 47 amps at the start. They'll slowly charge up and they'll use less and less until it gets down to 10 amps and then it will get down to 8 amps. And around the 8 amps to 6 amps point, I think, is the point that it then needs to be turned off. Um, so we need to kind of create some kind of circuit to do so. Otherwise, it'll just um, keep giving out power and even though the, the cells are charged. It shouldn't do any harm. Um, the eventually it'll get down to zero if you left it for long enough not that we are because we've got a short period of time that we've got to charge these things up um, in so which is the, the you know charging it in one day but um, but either way um, that was the idea that was the plan and um, it's changed a little bit since then but these couple of videos on the build are still relevant so obviously um, with mine I needed to get to 83 volts but for other people with less voltage you can by using server power supplies and by putting pots on them to be able to adjust the voltage on each of the power supplies you can actually come up with a whole range of different voltages that you can use and you can pretty much create your own um, high powered power supply for whatever size pack you're trying to charge um, obviously for me I needed six of them but um, most other people don't need six. Most other people will be able to do exactly the same thing by charging their e-bike battery or whatever battery they're trying to charge um, with either two or, or three of them um, together. So yes, you can you can adjust them up to 13.8, um, but you can also adjust them all the way down and um, to whatever number you like. So um, have a watch in the next couple of videos um, and I will do another, another overview video of everything else later on the track. Cool. Thanks, guys.